welcome back, everybody. We're Waterbox. here, Waterbox Live. We got a live audience with us here. We don't actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> Keenan clapping, all right. Yeah. We have a big day today. It's Waterbox mm -hmm. Wednesday, but it is time. We're doing the ultimate, the big giveaway for the yeah, show. Yeah, so you guys, today is the big day. We're giving the grand prize away. Keenan, can you pop that up on the screen? Or should I just rattle it off to him real quick before you yeah, drop yeah, into the intro? Pop it. Give me a sec here. Okay, so, so yep, we've been, it's week number four we're at. We've been giving away 10 cubes every show, but this is the ultimate grand prize. And we got the Cube 10 Plus Edition. $50 Live Aquaria gift card. That's a big deal. Yes, to get you some of your live sock corals. Um, mm -hmm. You've got, you know, two filter socks. You're waiting for me. I can't <laughs> read it. <laughs> Reef t-shirt, 53 gallon bag of live aquarium professional salt. You guys got to stick around till the end to win this. Keenan, we got a hell of a show for you today. Drop that intro. Welcome All right, back. we're back. Love that intro. Yeah. We're ready to get this started. So not only do we have the grand prize giveaway happening today, but we're going and talking about the maintenance, feeding, all that stuff. Now that the cube tents, which we've been doing, um, are on week three, week four, mm -hmm. being set up, we put in fish and some corals last week. It's time to talk maintenance. But in the meantime, we did get to add um, some more corals from Live Aquaria. Yep. And we're going to show off uh, the tanks, kind of let everyone see where they've kind of come along over the last week with some more corals in them. You can see we are like totally different with what we did. Yep, yep. I love, I love both of them. Um, and you guys, what we've shown you over the past now, what's going to be four weeks, is how you can easily set up one of these 10 gallon cubes. Um, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, intermediate, or a professional aquarium keeper, I mean they're relatively easy if you follow the steps that we showed you. Um, and you take your time, you guys can have a tank that looks like this too. Yeah, so we've kind of given the step by step from them sitting here dry to how to choose rock, sand, um, you know, cycling bacteria, all of that stuff. So mm -hmm. hopefully, you know, if you've never had a tank, you feel a lot more confident getting into one. Or even like we've said, you know, having a nano is different than having a big tank. So it's a really good guideline. Um, and kind of showing them off and like I've gone for like a full zoantha tank you've mm -hmm. gone softy leather kind of stuff like that yeah. um, we can show them some of our new stuff that came in this week yeah Keenan, can you zoom in on that uh, which there tank you want to do you have a close-up of I can't go to uh, go to mine real quick we're so, show off as you guys know, I, I, I kind of, if you've watched some of the previous episodes, I really like to keep with like the really easy stuff that doesn't require too much heavy maintenance and things like that. So, you can see there on your right, I believe, Beating is, sticks. oh yeah, so we got these new, uh, <laughs> these new sticks that I can point at these. You know, we got, there we go. we got the, the leathers over here. Jess, is this a Kenyan tree? Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So lots of <laughs> lots of leather Col corals. Coral, I yeah. Mean, so leather, we got the like nice neon green ones down here. We got the more of like pinkish colored. Um, up top, I got a bunch of different kind of toadstools, leathers. My favorite, of course, right down here is the star polyp. <laughs> <laughs> so I surprised these guys in the office. I said this might actually go on my desk when we're done with it. That's actually pretty amazing to hear because. Yeah. You don't do tanks in your office? Yeah, because um, we have so many around the office that I get to enjoy. I just didn't, don't feel the need. But I like this one because it's got all my favorite corals. It's going to be easy to keep up. It's in the 10-gallon cube. It's it's a win-win. Pretty jealous of your clove, uh, clove polyps. They are I really love neat. clove polyps. Um, one of my favorites as far as the softies and stuff go. I wish I would have thought to do that in my mix of zoos. But your tank is looking great. Um, so you can see both the fish are active and happy in there. They have adjusted well. And we have been testing all this time and continuing to add bacteria too. So I just want to make yep. sure that's known. Um, you know, as long as you go, only add stuff when the tank, uh, when you test it. And we talked about that last week, ammonia, nitrite being zero. Um, you know, don't add stuff if those are not what your levels are at. Yeah, so again, what we, like she's saying, what we're doing is illustrating within a four week period of setting up a little reef tank in these 10 gallon aquariums. By all means, take longer. Yes. You know, that yeah. we're not we're showing you that you, can, you should rush these things, but we're just trying to show you within a time frame, you know, how to set up step by step 
uh, series to set up one of these nano aquariums, and it's it's totally feasible. Um, it is. Your tanks are crystal clear. The water's good. Well, everything mm -hmm. tested. Um, so for mine, I've stuck with completely just zoos and pallies in here, um, and they're gonna just kind of cover in on the rocks. If you can zoom in on mine, there we go. You gotta um, get your colored pokey stick. My pokey stick. <laughs> oh, mine's pink. Nope. <laughs> thing. Okay, um, so it's kind of hard to see because sometimes zoos are a little bit easier to see kind of like top down or angled up, but I've got quite a few different um, small frags, bigger, I've seen some nice um, pink ones here, we've got green and orange, we've got a couple colony rocks that have gone, which are nice because they're going to help kind of fill in, and then just, you know, a few smaller frags, but the nice thing with this is it's going to completely coat all the rock, and it's just going to be all the different colors and they're going to mingle together. There will mm -hmm. be no height to it though. Like right. you have a lot of height, so I made my rock very large um, in order to do that. My fish are very shy, and I hardly see them so far. Um, the bang guy has kind of comes out, and the little bicolor blenny, he was hobbing around the rocks earlier in the show, but they have both gone completely in hiding. Yeah. So I would suspect that. I so promise these, there are fish in there. Yeah, I would suspect that because these tanks are in the studio and there's not a lot of people walking by them all the time, feeding them. They're so really so. shy. Yeah, I think if they were like, this was like in your living room or something, they would eventually get used to you being around. Yeah. You know, so. Because bank guys and stuff like that usually aren't too shy. Um, yours seem to be pretty out and about, but these two guys are just loving all the rock probably and just yeah, using so it to their advantage. One of the things you guys noticed, like she said, she's got all zoanthids in there. That's what, if you guys are new to this, that's something like we would call like a themed tank or something yeah. like that. She could of course add any other corals to it, just like I have in this one here if she wanted to. Um, but that's like a zoanthid dominated system. They look really cool and they all carpet all over the rocks. So a lot of times yeah. people like refer to it like a zoo garden. Um, where basically your rock completely gets covered, you don't see any of it, and you've got all the different colors and stuff like that. Um, and it just grows into like a mat. So they're both gonna look really different, but lots of nice color. Thank Live Aquaria again for the beautiful corals that they yes, sent us. Yes, thank you Live Aquaria. If you guys um, don't know about Live Aquaria, definitely go check them out. They, uh, one of the, in my opinion, best online coral sellers, live fish. fish. all that good stuff, yes. They got, and they do both freshwater and saltwater, so. Everything you could need, so. Yeah. Tanks are doing great, and now we kind of have to talk about the, you know, what do you do? Your tank is up and running, now you have some corals, you got some fish in there. Um, what should your maintenance look like? What are the steps you have to take regularly mm -hmm. to keep it clean? And one thing we we'll to focus on kind of is like feeding first. Yeah. So when you get, you know, your first fish or first coral, you may not really know what to feed. We've done a few shows and videos talking about fish feeding yeah. directly yeah. or coral feeding. We're gonna do a quick overview just for if you've never had a tank, um, and doing that stuff. So what well, we feed our fish here with the clownfish and the blennies and gobies, um, pretty basic feeding. And what we did is our, just use some mysis. Oh, that's this cup, there we go. So always whenever possible we use frozen food. It is going to be just healthier, more nutritious and cleaner mm -hmm. than dry food. Um, but you do not need to feed much. Generally we say a lot of times like one or two bites per fish once yeah. a day, once every day is plenty. Um, and to put that in perspective, guys, Jess, so the fish's stomach typically, general rule of thumb, is the size of their eyeball, Yeah, correct? so that's a good way to ration. It's not like mm -hmm. exact size, but like yeah. that's how much food kind of goes, they need per yeah, day. Yeah, it's just kind of like they're an easy not, reference. They're not swimming through, you know, big waves in an ocean. They're not burning a lot yeah. throughout the day, just hanging out in your tank. So their nutritional needs and amount of food is pretty low. Um, but they'll always like continue to eat and eat or look like they're hungry. Then you start feeding them too much, got more waste, dirtier water, yeah. hard, it's harder to keep your tank clean. So it's a good way to keep from overfeeding. Yeah, yeah. That's one that. thing I can say from my early years in the hobby is be careful not to overfeed. You know, that's a, that's a big thing that people do a lot. I know yeah. that when my kids come to the office, the first thing they want to do is throw a bunch of fish food in the tank <laughs> to feed the fish. But that can cause you trouble in the long run. So be do it sparingly and mm -hmm. you know listen to Jess's advice on how to, to feed the fish or the corals sparingly. Yeah. So if you want to go in on Rich's thing, because his fish are more friendly and active, they'll come out to eat. So we got some mysis that we went and defrosted. You see, there's what, maybe four or five little chunks of mysis going in. He looks a little frightened by them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you also figure there's a starfish and some cleanup crew and stuff in there, but you can see both of them going in after it. And that's really all they need. 
Yeah. Once a day. They got a couple bites, you know, some nice size mice that's right there. Mm-hmm. And the starfish, is he coming? Someone actually just said in the, the chat, where is the starfish? Is they that hide. him peeking his arms out right there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So, I mean, starfish generally are not going to be out and about all that much. They do tend to hide a lot, more nocturnal. Oh, there he is. He just jumped in the back of the, the tank. <laughs> And, um, you know, that's normal. So they're not going to be all the time out. But So if you guys, those fish that you're looking at there, you got a, a Courtchester goby, right? Mm-hmm. And a this is an aquacultured uh, snowflake clownfish, both from Live Aquaria. Uh, when you go on their website, you can see these fish. You can see their temperament, what size aquarium they need, how easy they are to keep. So it's a great resource when you're looking to buy new fish. So definitely go check that out. Those are some good eaters right there. They have no problem chowing down. Yep. Um, Healthy fish. Yeah. So, and then like, okay, that's your feeding. If you, you know, larger tanks, you have tangs and stuff. There's gonna be a lot of different nutritional needs, but we're focused basically on nano fish and they are gonna be basically, mysis is gonna be their diet for the most part. And they're yeah. gonna be good with that. A lot of them will pick algae around the tank and stuff. Um, and then you kind of come off to coral feeding. Yeah. So a lot of people are like, well, corals eat. Do I have to feed them? Do I need to put food into the tank for my corals? When do I start feeding my tank? Right. Stuff like that. Right. So this is, people have a lot of fun with this, feeding their, their corals and such. I've had tanks even just that, you know, I didn't feed the tank at all. They were wildly successful, but it really just depends on what kind of corals you're keeping, right? It does. And it really depends on like size of tank, what kind of corals, how many fish. Mm-hmm. Um, because some corals are just heavier eaters than others. And if you have a high fish load, they generally create waste and stuff that may feed your corals. Um, I would say almost every coral benefits from feeding mm-hmm. and it will improve growth and stuff. Sure. But it's within reason as well, because if you overfeed your corals, it's the same as way as overfeeding your fish. Mm-hmm. You're going to have a dirtier tank. You're going to have phosphate, algae, that kind of stuff. Um, so when should you start feeding your corals? Generally, I say when you probably have three, four, five corals in the tank, something mm-hmm. like this size, it would be benefit to start adding small amounts of coral food in there. And we do soft corals in both of our tanks, so just a powdered uh, coral food or something yep. liquid works. Um, we use the Coral Max and, and that one go. here. So if you guys don't know, this is called Coral Max from Max Out Aquatics. Um, what is it, maxoutaquatics.com? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so guys, check that out. This is a great food. People, it's really popular. It's really mm-hmm. great for broadcast feeding. So this is pretty easy. So it comes in a powdered form and you're going to take a little bit of water from your tank. And then since this is just these small tanks, I mean, we're talking just a tiny bit because we don't want to overdo it. Like I said, worst thing you can do is just put too much food into your tank. Um, You know, that's how people have a hard time getting their tanks going. It's always dirty, lots of algae problems. It's just basically overfeeding. And then you're mixing this with just some tank water. Dissolves in there. And then I'll actually pour a little bit in to each. So you guys can see that cloudiness. It's a very fine. Yeah, you uh, don't want it to where you're not seeing through your tank. Yeah. Uh, you probably put way too much if you that's the point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a very like fine particle food that, mm-hmm. you know, free floats, what we call broadcast feeding. Um, it's just gonna float throughout the tank. The corals are gonna take it in um, and they're gonna be happy. Right, because so corals like these, soft corals, they don't have like big mouths or anything to where they could take chunks of food. So it mm-hmm. has to be the small, smaller stuff that they filter feed out of the water. In like other types of corals, like LPS and stuff, they have a bigger mouth. You can actually feed them chunkier stuff. But these yeah. are purely filter feeders. Um, and then, then you just let that go through the system. Just do that. Um, you know, and usually once or twice a week is a good kind of starting point if you're just feeding a little bit um, as you get more corals and stuff into the tank. And it's just that sam- simple. I say less is more whenever yeah. it comes to yes, this stuff, abs- especially absolutely. in the beginning, especially in a small tank. Um, you know, one or two overdone feedings could easily put your nutrients yeah, and you over. Don't, you, got, you don't want to get into that cycle where you're dealing with green hair algae or cyanobacteria. Yeah. If you don't know what those are, after That's the show, hop topic. on to Google. <laughs> Again, you guys do your research. Um, and feed sparingly, you know. Mm-hmm. Don't starve your fish, but or your corals. But you know, when you do feed them, just be careful not to overfeed. That's a big thing for a beginner. Yes. Uh, to recognize, because again, one of the funnest things to do is to feed your fish and your corals. And they will trick you, and they will make yeah. you think that they are starving. Yeah. And if you fall for it, you're gonna regret it later. So yeah. um, just take it easy with the feeding and stuff, and you know, have fun with it. But there comes to be every time you have a tank, you've got to do some work on it. 
Yeah. So the maintenance is a necessary part of having your aquarium. Uh, and it's a good point, kind of, you know, there's been fish and corals in here for a week or two to start your regular routine maintenance of a water change mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. Yep. So we're going to do a uh, water change on one of these tanks for them, right? Yes. So we're going to do a water change um, and just show you like when you're doing a water change, what other steps you should do. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got like changing the sock, changing media, cleaning out that kind of stuff. And then we're going to show you basically how simple and fast it can be on a small tank like this. Yep. So anyone can do it if it's in your office, your house, your bedroom. Uh, first tank, it's super fast and easy. Number one thing, turn off your pump. Yes. Turn off your heater, turn off your pump. Um, because you don't want the pump to run dry and you also don't want a heater to ever be exposed and out of the water as it will um, have a chance of cracking or burning up or whatever. Yep. So don't do that and that means I have to locate what plugs are <laughs> what here. So, so guys, as she's doing that, remember, I see hundreds of people in here with us. At the end of the show, we'll be drawing the grand prize of a Cube 10 Plus Edition along with swag, Live Aquaria gift card, uh, Live Aquaria salt mix as well. So stick around for that. I have, we're also going to throw in some swag giveaways too at what? the end, so you got to be here to win that. So definitely stick around. Um, and while she's getting ready to perform this water change, I want to note, you know, with I'm if sure. you guys need the water that we're using, this is RODI water. It's very, very highly pure H two O. Do not use we, tap water. Yeah, do not use tap water. Um, head over to your local fish store if you need to to buy, you know. RODI water. Typically, you can find it at any local fish store. You can sometimes mm -hmm. even find pre-mixed salt water if you need it. Um, take the time to do that. You're going to thank yourself later. So I'm kind of doing it from back here because I can't reach from the front. So number one thing um, we're going to do is take out the filter sock. So with this, this isn't just when you do a water change. This is recommended at least once a week that I would change your sock um, more if it gets dirty, uh, especially in starting to tank sand debris mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But if it's getting kind of dirty or clogged at all, change it. But do it at least once a week, I recommend. Yeah, you guys can see, maybe you should put that up for them. You guys see how dirty this filter sock is. It? That right there is why these displays are so crystal clear. Zoom, no. Partially because. I don't know if you, I know if you could, if you had to, though. I can't do it. Okay. Uh, partially because see. of the Starfire glass, which I know you guys love. But also that filter sock keeps that water crystal clear. We have not found anything that clears water up as well as that does uh, right. mechanically. Um, it polishes, it catches all the dirt particles yeah. and all the food, anything that gets in there. Um, and then you have some clean socks right there. Oh, fresh socks. There you go. Um, so we do recommend kind of getting a handful of socks at a time and rotate them out. So if you've got them ready, you're more likely to change your socks regularly. Bam. Bam, a beautiful, clean, you can see the color difference now. See that is bright white, the other one is yeah. a dirty, dirty brown. Um, and that's all dirt that's not staying in your aquarium. So this is why they're so important. And then you got your removable sock cover. So holder. depending on where you guys, real quick, where you bought your water box, um, you can pick these socks up at your local retailer, all our online retailers. You can also pick them up at waterboxaquariums.com. Um, and these are, I, I do suggest renewing these every once in a while. We have subscription uh, set for these as well. You can save 10% if mm -hmm. you sign up for a recurring, you know, sock a month or something like yes. that. And then um, next kind of go by chamber. So you have your filter sock here. Next one is your filter sponges. And these are, you know, optional if you keep in. I kept one of them in here. And what we're going to do is you want to rinse these out every time you do a water change. Um, because it does catch some dirt as well and you don't want them to clog up with anything. And then we have. Doo, 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 doo. Can you get it out with the light in there? I think. On this side. Doo, doo, doo. So yeah, the, the black sponge that she just took out, you guys, when you when you rinse it out, you'll start seeing like all this gunk come out of it. You want to rinse it till it runs clear. Um, it's preferably an RO water as well. Um, oh, I think this one might be too big. I gotta unscrew that. So. <laughs> This is live, yes. by the way, so, you know. So the original bag of it's media. It's okay, though, because they got to stick around until the end. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, your water box key will come with a bag of carbon, and that's what we used initially for this. Uh, so we are actually going to take that out. Generally, your media, carbon, whatever you end up using, uh, I suggest changing once per month. And unless you have like an algae issue or something and you need extra phosphate, 
care. Um, and what we are going to actually do is replace this with Max Out. Um, so back to Max Out Aquatics, great products. They have coral food. They also have filter media. We use this on all of our tanks yeah. here. Works great. Um, and because of the size of this container, it's too much for a 10 gallon. So my head's right behind yeah. the light. <laughs> like, oh. Um, like, where'd her eyes go? <laughs> So it's too much for a 10 gallon. So I talked to Max Out and they said to take half of what's in here for the size tank and use it and then just save the other half for the next time that you changed it. So I actually put half of it back into the container. Yep. Put it aside, you got it for the next put time. Put it aside. Here is the media bag that it comes in and then I just zip tied it back over, rinsed it and it's good to go. So I want to repeat it. She did rinse the media. Did you make it? Well, you rinse it in RO water until it ran clear? Or how did, yeah. How so with, with this one, media? it's not too bad because it is pretty dust-free carbon okay. and stuff like that. I did a super quick rinse. You can. I actually just did it under top real quick. Okay. Um, just for any dust because they'll just kick into the tank. And um, but if you're using like bulk carbon or stuff like that, it's got a lot mm -hmm. of um, dust. Do you rinse it well, otherwise your tank's going to be black in no time. And have dust in your filter socks and sponges. And everything will be. I'm just yeah, covered in mess. it really quick. Yeah, so keep it just keep an eye out for what kind of filter media you're buying. Follow the instructions. A lot of them do require a pretty uh, a pretty good amount of rinsing to clear them up, so it doesn't yeah. flow around your tank. You don't want that. Um, and then we're not going to have to do it now, but kind of like a general thought that a lot of people don't think about is like your pump. You want to take that out every like month or two and just kind of clean it because the intake grate will get kind of gunked up. Mm -hmm. Um, it's going to slow down the flow if you're not cleaning it. Take it apart, give it a good cleaning, put it back in place when you're doing a water change. Do that every couple months and it's going to help keep everything uh, lasting longer and keeping your flow up. So that's pretty much it for your basic maintenance except for the yep. water change. And that's super easy too. Let me move this stuff over Keith, here. You got, oh, we got a question. I was just going to ask. Yeah, we got several questions on these topics. All right. um, should you feed into the pump head to carry the powder throughout the tank, or does that not matter? Um, I say just to put it like in front of the pump outtake. Like I wouldn't put it into the pump chamber, but just in front of your flow, and it'll circulate it into the tank. Just oh. as long as you don't put it right where the drain is, it, it's all good. Yeah, in like, this particular tank, I think that's a better option, just to put it right in front of the nozzle. Yeah. Felt or Micron socks for this Q10? Um, they are felt. Micron is the size of the felt and how small the holes are. Felt is just the material. Mm -hmm. um, so these ones here are 225 Micron felt 2.75 inch filter sock. Yeah, and there are mesh filter socks, which may have been kind of what they were for referring to. For the bigger to. sizes? Yeah, so yeah. We, this particular sock we only have in a felt. Um, but there is such thing as a, a mesh sock. Yeah, there's like 100 micron, 225 <laughs> micron, and so for the felt, and then you got like your mesh ones. Another one, how do you clean the socks? Um, okay. Very carefully. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, um, I so do you have multiple ways to do it. It depends on how involved you want to get. If you ask Rich, he says to buy a new one every time you want to change your filter sock because he doesn't want so to wash them. So what you do, them. in that case, you guys, you go on waterboxaquariums.com, <laughs> you select like, I don't know, six units a month and you're good. Yeah. So every time we, every we talk, Rich and I talk about it, he says, just get a new one. And <laughs> otherwise, um, a good solution partially joking is... Partially joking when I say that. Partially. <laughs> um, you can do it a few ways. You can clean them into the sink. Um, it's not going to get them super clean because there's not a lot of like force. You can take them out with like a garden hose and like the jet setting. Um, this works, but it's a bit aggressive on them. You're going to wear them out faster. Yeah. The best solution if you can do it is to throw them in your washing machine. And people are like, what are you talking about? Um, no, no soap, but you can yeah. run them. Um, if you wanted to, you can do a dab of bleach, but otherwise just throw them in, throw them on a rinse cycle or two, let them air dry and then use them. It's the easiest method and it doesn't get them worn out nearly as fast. Yeah. So. Yep. Don't put your clothes in with them, though. So. I mean, you could if you want to smell real yeah, funky. If you want to smell like your fish tank. You like that that aroma. Um, how many times can they wash them before they really start getting worn out? I mean, like, what would you say on average? I know that's probably a hard thing to answer because it really depends. It does. It depends. It depends on how how often you are washing them. Um, and what method you're using. If you're taking them out with a hose and stuff like that, they're not going to last you nearly as long. Um, and then also, if you leave them in the tank, they're getting really clogged and might stretch them out. Um, so there's a lot of variables. So I'd say every couple months, 
Thelma Y and start with some new ones. Yeah, that's yeah. What I, was I mean, it, it you can stretch them for longer, but as soon as they start losing their texture to it, they're not catching as much. Right. So right. they start not being Starting as efficient. Starting to break down a little yes. bit, come apart. Okay, here's a follow up to that: um, putting them in the washing machine. Yes. Say, isn't um, should you use detergent because detergent is bad for the tank? Right. No, like I said, don't put soap in there. At best, you can use a little bit of bleach, but even then, that really is not necessary, especially if you don't feel comfortable with it. Um, never detergent, no cleaning products, no anything. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Good. Should we All start right. jumping into this water change? Shirts? You want some shirts? Oh. All right, you guys. Well, Jess gets started here. <laughs> Kate is like... Okay. okay. We're going to give away some shirts. So I'm going to just start the water change. All we're doing is in a 10 gallon tank, we're draining out like one, maybe two gallons. What we're aiming for on these tanks is do like a 10 to 15 or so percent once a week. Um, and then if you want to do it every two weeks, you could just do a little bit more. It just depends on what you can do. And we're just draining it into a bucket. Um, if you had dirty sand or something, you could probably siphon your sand, but we are just doing this for removing nutrients and refreshing all the elements. Is there a bulldozer on YouTube with us right now? If bulldozer is on YouTube, I want you to give a thumbs up to the, the live chat. Is there a bulldozer? Am I, am I saying that right, Keenan? That was his name on there. <laughs> you got a thumbs up? Anybody? Anybody? I'm waiting. All right. If you is... don't know, I'm giving away shirts right now, so I'm just waiting for that thumbs up. <laughs> oh, they're like, why are we doing this? <laughs> so, Bulldoza, are you here? You got to be here to win. All right. That's so... my rule for today. <laughs> I'm probably, this, yeah, for the shirt. is my pokey stick very distracting that I'm like swinging it around? <laughs> Please don't poke yourself in the eye with it. <laughs> um, so that's all I did. I mean, that's mm, one and a half gallon, somewhere around there. And then I have our pre-mixed water ready to go. This would be like if you went and bought it from your local fish store. It would be pre-mixed. You bring it back in a bucket, and then you're just going to fill it. All right, I don't think he's here. I don't think he's here. Brian um, Eckert. Is there a Brian Eckert here with us on YouTube? If you are, <laughs> give us a thumbs up. If you can give me the thumbs up. I don't know up, if they're paying attention I'm going to give you a free water box reef t-shirt. Everybody's giving thumbs up. <laughs> I see lots of thumbs up. You got to be the right person. <laughs> but I don't see any yet from okay. Brian, Mr. Brian. Um, well, Surely no. you're there. They're yeah, just, I know. Are we muted? <laughs> So when you're adding your water back, do it real slow because you don't want to kick up your sand or like do it too aggressive on in your coral. So I'm just slowly adding this back in. Nice thing about a small tank like this is if you do your water change like every week, you can pretty much just not have to dose and you're adding all your stuff right back in. I see Brian Ecker give a thumbs up. Alrighty, Brian gave the thumbs up. So <laughs> congratulations, Brian. Shoot an email over to support at waterboxaquariums.com. They will get your shirt shipped out. So that's an awesome shirt. I love that shirt. All right. So we're pouring our water back in. Someone said Bulldozer was here. Keaton, if you can confirm that, uh, we'll... You just said I'm here now. Okay. Ah. So guess what? We gave away two shirts. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Woo! Congratulations. <laughs> Um, I see, yeah, lots of thumbs up over in Facebook, too. Um, well, I don't know. Let, no, well, yeah, we do over. have, uh, so we're, we're going to show some love to Facebook, too. So, uh -oh. you know what? Since we gave away two shirts on YouTube, I'm going to give away two on Facebook as well. Oh, yeah. So if we got a Beverly Ficanon, per, forgive me if I pronounced that wrong, and Stephen Killiam on Facebook, give us a thumbs up. Thumbs up, let's see a look. You guys will get a t-shirt as well, so, so that's Beverly awesome. So Beverly and Steven. Are you already done with the water change? I am, okay, so I put the water back in, and I would I think just... I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one thing I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna clean off this sponge real quick in the water that I pulled out. Just for real quick for any dirt. Super fast. Boom, just like that. Put the sponge back in. All Someone right. asked if where's the rum today. I'm drinking jasmine tea. It's kind of you know. We didn't have rum last week either. Yeah, there's something going on, guys. Something's. Uh -huh. We'll have rum next week, <laughs> I guess. Send things for margaritas. That's yeah. my favorite. Yeah, that's we need how you talk. We do. Yeah, that's very nice. Okay, change the sock. 
change the media, clean the filter pad, did a water change, boom. Even through just talking and kind of doing stuff. Yeah. 10 minutes. We're good. Ten minutes. Done. Just like that, gonna plug everything back in. So if you guys are dreading the maintenance on something like this, 10 minutes as we're talking, you know, messing around. And, and it's we're back done. on. Boom, done. And that's really it. So you're looking at water, like I said, water change once a week, once every other week, kind of depending on what you can manage to do. Um, change your filter stuff one to two times a week. Change your media once a month. Clean your filter pad every time you do a water change. I think that's most of it, right? Mm -hmm. I think so. So that simple, that easy. And now your fish and corals are gonna go, ah. Everything feels nice and clean. <laughs> We're say, thanks. Thanks. Um, and then. Thanks for caring for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did we? I, has anyone? Are they here? Did we look? Uh, everyone's here. Everyone's thumbs up. Baby. Beverly and Steven? Yes. Okay. Congratulations, Beverly. Yeah, congratulations, and you guys, winning those t-shirts. We were only going to give away two shirts. We gave away four. Look at that. Because we love you guys. <laughs> you guys are awesome. There's so many people in here with us. Just email support and uh, let them know you want a t-shirt and they'll get you all taken care of. And man. So. so there you guys have it. That is four weeks of setting up a 10 gallon aquarium. Just like that. We yep. got two beautiful aquariums. Um, love it. If you guys are looking to buy one of these too, which I have to go into that because <laughs> uh, that's what we do. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it is what we do. It's over here. <laughs> Sorry, it's hard for me to t do serious things. Um, so you can hop on WaterboxAquariums.com, Marine Depot, SaltwaterAquarium.com, Live Aquarium, uh, and we also have tons of retailers nationwide, mm -hmm. which you can find right on our website. So support your local retailer. You know, go out and find you a water box. Join the family. Join the water box family. Hop on our Facebook group, join over there. There's about 7,000 people in there that love aquariums just like you guys do, so definitely check that no, out. No, you didn't say in the beginning? What? Like, like share, subscribe. Dang it. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> like, share. I just remember, this is <laughs> like, well, we're totally talking about this, and you never yeah, did so that. So like, the sh share, subscribe, <laughs> but also turn on those notifications because we are live every week. Uh, every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern. We're always doing something fun, something yeah. different. You know, we got tons of builds yeah. in our in the plans and all that stuff. Yeah, we're, but I mean, we're having a good time. We love I, it. I think people. I know why people are really here today. Yeah, yeah. You guys want to win something? <laughs> yeah, ready. So let's show the prize again. Okay, so show the prize again. It's gonna be about to be time. So one lucky person is getting the 10 Cube Plus Edition. Got fifty dollars live Aquaria gift card. A set of filter socks. And we also are throwing in a, some water box swag. The Reef t-shirt as well as a 53 gallon bag of Live Aquarius Professional Reef Salt. So you got everything here you need to get your tank from no water to having fish and coral. Yeah, it's a great way to start. It's a beautiful tank. You've seen it already set up, so you already know what to do. Yep. You are you got all the knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, we filled you full of knowledges. <laughs> Four weeks of knowledges. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so we've gone through where people have been able to uh, enter into this giveaway for the last four weeks. It ended at six o'clock today yeah. for the drawing. And how is the winner picked on this one? So Let them know how we picked it. Okay guys, so if you're curious how we picked this winner, um, you guys probably already signed up. You saw the landing page. We use a software called Viral Sweep. It is completely done by random, um, and we drew that here at 6 p.m. So we have that winner now. Mm -hmm. um, are you gonna? Are you gonna? Are you ready? I'll show the name. On the okay. Oh, so, he's already got the name all right. right. Guys, drum Can roll. we drum roll? Uh, Here's the grand prize is? winner, Nomer Pinaranda. I'm sorry if I butchered sorry. that. Uh, congratulations again. This contest is available um, in any country that we have distribution to. So. Congratulations, Nomer. That's awesome. So the winner will be emailed, mm -hmm. and we'll get it coordinated with them. So very exciting. I'm so excited. We have now have four additional people join the Waterbox family mm -hmm. through this series. Um, this is the fourth cube that we have given away. Yeah, just that's for awesome. This build. And now we get to decide, if is Rich going to take his tank into his office? I, I definitely think that's going to happen. I'm... Yeah. I think Angela's taking mine. Yeah, yeah, she is. I already have a tank in my office. It's full of enemies. I don't need another one. Yeah, so, so definitely I'm going to put this one in my office. Uh, enjoy it for a little while. Um, this th this broadcast table that we built here definitely has far too much weight on it. <laughs> <laughs> so 
<laughs> there's three aquariums sitting on it. Um, so. Well, We're this gonna... has been a really good series. I've really enjoyed it. We've had a lot yeah. of people that have, um, you know, said that they didn't really know how to start a tank, that they've learned a lot from this. And hopefully, you know, anyone who's interested can go back to this series and mm -hmm. follow step by step. Yep. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Make sure you tune in next week because we're here every week and we're having a lot of fun teaching you guys how to be better at aquariums. So uh, never know what we're going to do. Yeah. So we'll see you next week. See ya.